Hi, my name is Savannah Mikoso. I'm from Suba, Fiji. My name is Ileana Suava. People call me Luke here. I come from New Zealand. The United States. I'm from Malaysia. I was born and raised in Japan. And I am Fiji and Patong. Half Japanese and half Chinese. I'm Mexican, Samoan. Maori European. I'm Samoan and Samoan. Malaysian and Chinese. I'm half Samoan, half British. Hawaiian, Chinese, Filipino, Irish, and Danish. Someone comes up to me and asks me what I am. I just tell them, oh yeah, my mom's from Mexico and my dad's from Mexico. I just say I'm Maori. Quite kind of. Yeah, I guess. It depends. Otherwise, I just say I'm Kiwi. Like, I'm half white and then Chinese, Hawaiian, Filipino. Because that usually satisfies them. Because they're like, well, why are you kind of brown? <laughs> like, you look pretty white, but not all white. Um, but usually, they just want to know if I'm Latino or not. They, they usually say, huh? But why are you so fair? I'm like, oh, it's because my mom's Tongan and my dad's Fijian. So, oh, I've never met a half Tongan and a half Fijian. I'm like, oh. yeah, I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Alafkasi is a half Samoan, uh, half white mix. Call them blasteran. It's a Dutch language. It's Dutch. Blasters actually means that it means kind of like a mixed blooded. People back home will recognize me as Sino Kadazan. That would that's how they would um, say it. Mostly if you say blasteran, it connotes that you're an animal. It used to be a very offensive word. Used to, not now. with like the culture like but not the language because my grandparents didn't speak the language to my mum. The Japanese culture is really strong and they're really strong people so you try to fit in the uh, fit into the culture so that you can kind of be part of it. So I would just kind of pretend that I don't really have a Maori side but more focus on the Japanese side. My mom would tell me stories, like I would ask it because I was so interested in legends and myths when I was younger. Then she would talk to me and tell me stories about like Tonga and Sabo. But then when it came to the culture in general, all I knew was the Taobala just made her Tongan. <laughs> that was it. Like the main culture in my house was actually Japanese because my dad grew up that way. And so like we would eat Japanese food every Sunday and like talk about Japanese holidays. But as well, I would say Hawaiian. Uh, because my dad lived in Hawaii for a while. I had like equal exposure to both uh, cultures, like food-wise, like my mom, well, mostly my mom's food, my mom is the one that cooks, so I'm more exposed to her kind of food, but then when we go to like big someone gatherings, like best believe I'll be all over that, <laughs> that's what I'm on food. My parents come from like totally opposite cultures, like you got British, like kind of like refined, reserved, you kind of keep all your feelings on the inside, and then you have Samoans, which are loud, obnoxious, fun, like the opposite. My dad will always teach me, you have to use a proper chopstick. You cannot do it like this, you have to like that. You're Chinese, be Chinese, speak Mandarin, like that. Oh, but when my mom's at home, like, hey, like, you were born from me, or you're Japanese. So I have to wear a, a kimono and a hakama at home. So it depends on who's at home. I, I've just always been proud of Samoan Tongan. Like, I, don't get, I never saw a distinction between Like my Samoan cousins, my Samoan side, you know, they were, um, some of them would say, oh no, he's more Tongan. Um, you know, he goes to the Tongans more, he, does, he goes to his Tongan side more. Um, but for the Tongans, it was the opposite. They would say, oh no, he's more Samoan. Like, like, you always go to your Samoan side, you always rep your Samoan side, you know, you're always dancing in Samoan section for um, May Days, you know, cultural performances and stuff like that. So that didn't really phase me, but then it, it did make me think like, shoot, am I? Like, am I? You know, I would always question myself. I think the disadvantage is that your identity is constantly challenged by everyone, <laughs> even non people who are not even from your culture. You still get those comments like, oh, do you speak the language? No? Okay, you're not someone, or you're not someone, you know? Even growing up, I'd have like a Mexican girl and I would tell her, oh, I'm Samoan. She's like, you're not Samoan. And I'm like, how would you know? You're Mexican. <laughs> I always felt like I was kind of not Maori enough, but that's not how they saw me, but that's just how I thought they saw me. Like I was just kind of like this white kid. 
most of them, you know, they mean it as joking, as a joke, but I mean, there's always truth to, <laughs> to jokes. I came to Fiji, I was like, excuse me, I grew up in Fiji, I ate, I slept, I talked like one. Okay, my accent is one. I don't care what you think of me, I'm Fiji, and if you call me plastic, I never heard that word until I came here. I'm like, plastic? I'm not made for plastic. <laughs> Mexican friends like from Mexico and they were like super psyched they're like what you're Mexican and someone like I never heard of that like girl you're Latina like let's go and then I was like oh yeah I thought they're gonna be like look at this giant girl over here like she's she thinks that she's Mexican but they were like really accepting if they find out that I'm Hawaiian they'll be like, oh like why don't you ever talk about it I'll be like well because I'm plastic and like I don't know I just don't feel like I have the credibility like, I'm, I have a fair skin, hey, you're not Indonesian, you can't belong in our community. If I go to the Chinese culture, man, you, you don't look Chinese. I know you speak Mandarin, but you don't look like us. Like, you're more Japanese by face. No, you can't play with us. Oh, you're someone who's like, yeah, and they're like, then they start speaking to me in someone, and they're like, oh, wow, you don't even know someone, and I was just like, no, <laughs> um, but you can teach me. Some of them will laugh, but some of them will be like, wow, you're so plastic, and like, you're... You're white, and I was just like, okay, cool, like, <laughs> whatever. I don't speak a fluent Chinese, so the, the family, uh, my dad's side, uh, they don't really actually, they don't feel like there's a need of me to, like, tr even try to live the culture fully. Even if I learn and speak Hawaiian fluently and learn the culture so, so well, I didn't grow up here, and so I don't have those kind of connections. Then when I chose the Japanese side, it's like, Nah, your dad is Chinese. We, we hate Chinese, don't come near us. So it's kind of hard to, to fit into any of them. There's like the poly kids that all hang out, the Asian kids that all hang out, and the white kids that all hang out. But I feel like I haven't been fully accepted by any of those groups. And I can kind of like bounce around and I have friends in all those groups, but I'm not poly enough to be with all the polys. I'm not Asian enough to be with all the Asians, and I'm not white enough to be with all the white kids. Oh, it's because you're not really Fiji and I'm like, Bruh. <laughs> my dad's a culture specialist. He didn't even teach me the culture, you know? Like, he only taught me bits and pieces, and he wanted me to learn the culture from my own desire. Uh, I can tell when some of them are just joking, which is fine, because that's how the Polynesian culture is, like having fun, joking. So I joked back, but then there were some incidents, like, fairly rare, really rare here, because, you know, the way Hawaii is all about embracing different cultures, but it's very rare where I see people really being judgmental and, like, looking like not being open to when I ask them questions, they're like kind of closing me off kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had a fight like <laughs> one. I feel like it changed me when I served mission because I served in New Zealand. So when I came back, I, I feel like I connected more with Maori people and also people from New Zealand or Australia more than before my mission. I don't know, everyone said my Maori side is coming out more <laughs> by participating and trying to, you know, be part of the group. I remember my first culture night, like, I was like a little freshman, I had like, not a lot of friends, but going to like the Samoan culture nights and like, feeling like I was involved in something and I remember just like, I was practicing like, in the rain, like, all the Samoan dances and it made me feel like, man, I'm, I'm getting something, like, I feel like I'm connecting. Something. Another amazing experience when I went to Mauna Kea last year um, and I went with some friends and none of them were Hawaiian, none of them were even Pali, but we all really wanted to go to Mauna Kea and we got there and one of my other friends, we were talking to the Kapuna and my friend was like, yeah, she's Hawaiian and like I immediately it was like, oh my gosh, no, why did he say that? Like, now I'm gonna have to like prove it and they'll be like, well, no, because you look Latina. I don't know, I just felt so scared to just, like try to have to prove, I guess, that I was Hawaiian. But I, here I was on Mauna Kea, like in the most, one of the most sacred places in Hawaiian culture, surrounded by these Hawaiian elders. Like it was the most beautiful thing ever and they accepted me. And like, they didn't ask me questions about where I was from or what my last name was or anything like that. Like they just immediately like, oh yeah, you're one of our people. And so that was one of the, I feel like that was the moment where I was able to accept for myself, like I am Hawaiian, this is a part of who I am and I can own this. Like I don't have to be ashamed. Like I can, I can say that I am a part of this. 
when anyone accepts me as a Hawaiian or a part Hawaiian, like it's, it makes my world. And so I remember every time it happens really, really well. I can think of a few Samoans who like from the beginning, they just made me feel like accepted. They never made comments about me being fake or whatever. The first one that comes to mind is Tashpa Alongo, Becca Toleafoa. To, to Michelle Sam is another one. Faivale, Tasha Faalongo was one. Uh, Glory Fuimono. Yeah. Since I met her, she's like, oh, your middle name is Fatima. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm Afghasim Samoa. And she's like, okay, cool, Fatima, cool. And so ever <laughs> since then, everyone, she knows everyone calls me Amber, but she's the only person who has consistently called me Fatima. And I'm like, I don't know why, I just love it. Cause I'm like, I feel like that's her way of like accepting me too. I don't know, they just, I don't think they see like an Afghasim. Like they just, <laughs> that's just them, you know? And they're just open, so like you want to go to ask them questions, like you feel comfortable asking them cultural questions. And then Pohai from Maui, when she found out I was Hawaiian, she she would always like kind of back me up, I guess, um, whenever anything came up, like yeah, she's one of us kind of thing. I think for me it was uh, Emily. She was the Fiji club president. She was always inclusive of everyone and. She would always ask me, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you? You know, she didn't think of me as, oh, you're Fiji and Tongan. I don't need to care about you, you know? Hone, Hone Bailey. He worked in the Maori village. Because I'd never done any kind of cultural performances in my life, I learned at the village. Every time I would say, oh, I learned how to do this, he'd be like, wow, that's really great, great job. And even when he would talk about other people who I thought were kind of not very good at it, like they were just learning, he just said, they're learning. And that's sort of, so I kind of felt whatever I did within the culture, I felt sort of accepted by it. So. This is Professor. He's my Aikido sensei. He's Chinese, but it's like doing this Japanese martial arts, right? So I train under him. He's like the one that said like, hey, I, I'm full Chinese. You know how Chinese I am. But I embrace the Japanese culture. If someone can embrace other people's culture, why cannot I accept you and embrace you as my student? That, that simple word, like, I think it works a thousand, like, for us. So he makes me think that in this place I am accepted. And whenever I'm around him, I feel like, man, I don't need to care about being Chinese or Japanese. Like, this guy makes me feel whole, everything. I can be Chinese with him. I can be Japanese with him. We practice Aikido together. And then we go out and eat the Chinese noodle together. So it's nice. I love being mixed. Yeah, it has its downsides, but at the end of the day, I love being mixed. Oh, I like everything about it. Not everything, I know there's some things that are like disadvantages, but it's awesome. Like, I can claim both sides, I mean, that's the biggest thing for me. I get to live both cultures at the same time. You can relate to the white folks for me and the Maldives. For example, I get to celebrate um, certain holidays. Um, that most people don't get to do it. I get to learn the languages as well. Someone told me they're, they're proud people. So like, I get to tap into that. <laughs> it took a while for me to really like, see like how much of a blessing it is because you know, not being fully accepted in either one. But there's also an advantage, it's such a blessing because then you are more open to like other things because you grew up with two different things rather than just one. It's just like, not saying like if I was just full someone, like I'm closed off, no, 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 but like, you're more, you just have more experiences where you have to, you have to experience both. Like you can't just experience one. I feel like it doesn't hold you to just one group of people. You know, you, you're more open-minded to have friends from all over the world, all places, you know? Like you have a different view of things, you know, because you have two cultures, your mind's open and accepting to anything new. Their view is like only here, but yours is like, this plus this, it's there, you know? So that's what I love about being mixed, is like, you know, I'm trying so many new things, and like, which um, someone can do as well, but like, we're already born into that. And you know what, half class been looking. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. For real though, I'm gonna say, you know? You Makes see these like... half Asian white kids? They are so They're cute, beautiful. so beautiful. Yeah. Like, Well, you get left out! <laughs> Most of the 
sometimes you get left out and you're called plastic so you can talk to both but you don't feel like you fit in with both now you're being challenged every day to prove the worth of your life you know just because you don't fit into their culture you struggle with when you when you're with the full-blooded you you struggle about like I'm not that, like I'm only half or I'm only, I'm only a quarter. Like you struggle finding your sense of identity. Because it feels good like when you're like with your Samoan friends or with your Mexican friends and you're just like totally like 100% like all there. Like you're just like heck yeah, like I agree, I agree, agree. But then there's some things that you're just like, hmm, like you have a different perspective but you kind of don't want to say it because you're like, uh, I don't know. Um, expectations of, I guess, both cultures. So be able to claim both cultures but you also, you know, you're tied to those expectations as well. Both sides of you want you to choose. They want, they're like, literally like being tugged on, like someone's either all Samoan or you're not Samoan, or you're either full European or American or you're not. So it's like, as a mixed kid, you're constantly in the middle. You just have to realize that you yourself is unique and people just have to accept that and then they, they just have to accept who you are and there's no need for you to change who you are just so that you can fit in um, with the people around you like own it like you know your part whatever your part just own it because not many individuals are mixed and so if you feel like you need to be accepted by other people then that's what's gonna hurt you the most it's cliche would say who cares <laughs> Just be yourself. Uh, don't try even don't even try to find your identity. Because at the end of the day, what makes you, it's you. I feel like being mixed is just so complicated and it's still something that I'm learning how to deal with and to do it right. Honestly it's gonna take work. I think that's the biggest thing for Afkasis is that you know we just think that the blood our blood is kind of the key to <laughs> to fitting in, you know, and it should be, I mean, that should be a factor, but you gotta show, you know, you have to go out of your way to show that you, you want to connect to the culture. And so when you show and you make that effort to uh, connect back to your roots, you know, sure, they're 150%, you know, supportive. Like, well, I'm someone, so you should just accept me. That's not, <laughs> yeah. that's not how you go about it. You've got to be humble. I mean, they're scared to put themselves out there. You know, they don't want to be seen as a plastic. I mean, by default we are already. So who cares? Like, you know, now's a chance to kind of, you know, um, kind of build your cultural side. Just be yourself and put yourself out there. There'll be people attracted to you. And sometimes when you're like left out by your your own ethnic group, it, it hurts. But then because of that, I was able to mingle with other people, like with the Samoans, with the like a girl who's Jamaican. To be honest with you, I really like my, my culture, both Chinese and Japanese. But at the same time, you know, it's this the time that you can embrace other people. It doesn't always need to be your culture that is the center of your ideology. They don't accept you, they don't accept you! Go around you! <laughs> you can't be accepted by everyone! It's hard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I hope people will see us um, like we're normal people. Um, even though we have two different uh, cultures that we embrace, but that doesn't mean that we choose one culture over the other. On top of that, like we're already trying to figure out who we are, and we already have other things. So, like the least you can do, or anyone can do, is you know be mean to someone. We have feelings. No culture is important and that's what makes it who you are but not being the full Japanese doesn't mean that I'm not Japanese, you know. I am still Japanese and I do practice the culture that they have to. I think a lot of people, they want a simple answer or a simple label for someone and so when someone asks me like, oh what are you? They usually just want to hear like one or two things at the max. Um, but that's not who I am. Hopefully that I just hope that people will accept us as who we are and not try to change us or try to tell us which culture to embrace. 
your ethnic identity, your cultural identity is not something that's simple and you can't just slap a, a nice easy label on it. That's why people are frustrated with us because they can't understand us right off the bat. They can't just attach the label as soon as they can. Everyone in Fiji is, so, is trying so much to be westernized and then I come here and everyone's trying so hard to be Fijian, you know, trying so hard to be Tom. Come here and then everyone's like, I'm Fijian, I have to work in the village, I have to do this, I have to dance in Fijian. Everyone's trying so hard to find their identity that they are pushing, they are pushing what the real thing is about, they're pushing it. Like, I'm a proud Samoan, I love Samoa and I love Samoan culture. But I also have half of me that is British and like what if my ancestors were like in front of me right now like half the congregation would be someone and half the congregation would be European and what are the Europeans going to say? I'm like I can't abandon that part of me because it is a part of me. The cultural barrier is strong, I know, but there is always a way to bridge it. You don't need to destroy your culture, you just have to bridge it. Do something in common that makes everyone feel accepted. Life will be more beautiful that way. It's not easy being 